Hey there, this is Matt with uh, Defense Innovations, and uh, today we are going to start off a new segment of Defense Innovations, uh, and our discussions will be based around body armor and armor choices, and we are going to do some testing uh, with all the armors that we're going to be reviewing uh, here on the channel. And I wanted to start off with a little bit of a uh, trailer and or teaser um, for things to come this fall, 2016. And I wanted to start off by looking at helmets. Okay, so this is something that is relatively new to the market. Um, well, new to what I ref would refer to as civilian consumption type items. I mean, there's been vests available for years for the civilian market. Uh, you could always go and get surplus um, you know, military helmets, uh, I just call them NATO helmets, is what, what I've seen out there a lot of. And, um, <clears throat> but now I'm starting to see some of the um, maybe more up to date, more modern versions of helmets coming onto the market. And uh, both of these helmets right here, they're the same model. Um, they're the, what I would call the, the high cut model of uh, a military helmet that's available on the market now. High cut means that your ear. Uh, would be exposed and one of the reasons for that is just like on this one there's a uh, you know MSA ear protection on there um, whereas a standard uh, more traditional infantry helmet would come down and cover that um, but making it more difficult to have um, comm systems integrated into it um, there's lots of things that we can get into talking about this helmet right here um, but in particular um, this one here is um, produced and sold by Trenton Tactical LLC um, outside of Cincinnati Ohio uh, this is their model they designate as fast. This was this uh, was manufactured in August of 2016 uh, with an NIJ rating of 3A. So we're going to get into a little bit of uh, the rating system here. Um, this is not going to be a full-on uh, ballistics discussion. I'm not a ballistician by any measure. I'm not a scientist. Um, but we are going to test this helmet in particular, the black one here. We are going to test this against some threats uh, later on and see how it performs in some more, uh, I'd say, unlaboratory type settings. Um, but first off, I want to do a little bit of discussion. Uh, information from the manufacturer states, testing was conducted in accordance with modified provisions of NIJ standard 0106.01. Ballistic helmets uh, using caliber 357 SIG, 125 grain FMJ, and 44 Magnum 240 grain ammunition. The test samples were mounted on an indoor range uh, from a range of 16 and a half feet from the muzzle of the test barrel to produce a zero degree impact. Photoelectric infrared screens were positioned at 6.5 and 9.5 feet, which in conjunction with elapsed time counters chronographs were used to compute the projectile velocities eight feet from the muzzle. Penetrations were determined by visual examinations of 0 0.020 inches thick. Alloy 2024 T3 aluminum witness panel positioned five inches behind and parallel to test samples. Table 1 presented a summary of the attached data records, which I'll be able to put those pictures of the data tables uh, into this video as well. Basically, what they're saying is this will defeat some pistol threats. There, there is no helmet that I know about uh, on the market right now that is, um, shall I say, affordable and or easy to get that's going to stop a rifle threat. So let, let's dispel that right now. These may be bulletproof helmets, um, but they're more like bullet-resistant helmets. Um, you know, the military adopted helmets a long time ago for various different reasons, but really the main reason was to protect from general head trauma, such as fragmentation from explosives or grenades, um, you know, falling pieces of buildings or trees or, or whatever was going on. This Helmets were really never designed to stop full-on shots to the head from really anything, but mainly rifle calibers will, will just penetrate just about anything that you see here. Um, and so Let's just dispel that now. These are to protect your noodle from hitting it, you know, getting in and out of a vehicle. You know, if you're running through, you know, and you, you hit your head on something in a city or whatever the case may be. That's what these are designed for. Um, now, having said that, 
again, these are rated as NIJ3A. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the uh, what the NIJ calls out here. So if you go to uh, the Department of Justice here, and if you pull up their nice 89-page PDF uh, on what their standards are, 3A is listed as follows. Type 3A, 357 SIG 44 Magnum. Type 3A armor that is new and unworn shall be tested with 357 SIG full metal jacket, bullets with a specified mass of 125 grains and a velocity of 448 meters a second, plus or minus 9.1 meters a second, which kind of translates into roughly 1,470 feet per second, and with a 44 Magnum uh, semi-jacketed hollow point, uh, with a specified mass of 240 grains and a velocity of roughly four, 1,430 feet per second. Type 3 armor that has been conditioned or worn will be tested with similar uh, parameters of 357 SIG, full metal jacket, uh, the same mass of 125 grains, and a, and a slightly lower velocity of uh, 1,410 feet per second. Same 44 Magnum bullet, same mass of 240 grains uh, with a velocity of 1,340 feet a second. So just slightly slower, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's going to be the same test shot. So those are the challenges that something would need to uh, overcome to be certified as 3A. So mainly what you're looking at here is you're going to be stopping um, medium range caliber bullets moving at supersonic speeds. So, um, you know, you're looking at both of those bullets um, well traveling over that, that speed. Um, so, just some of the things we'll talk about here. Um, this helmet uh, is produced um, and sold uh, by Trenton Tactical, and I will put a link to their website in this video. That is a Again, a full-on high-cut helmet. It's, it's really sturdy. I was really impressed with this helmet. Um, it's got uh, the interior padding, as you can see here. Okay. It's also got the suspension system in here like a standard helmet does, and it is adjustable in the back. You know, there's two sizes that these helmets come in. It's like a small medium and a large extra large. So there's really two sizes, and it's adjustable and it all depends on the circumference of your head. So uh, I would recommend, you know, when I got mine, you know, my personal one is the green one here actually, um, I would recommend getting out, um, what you can do is just get a strip of paper, a long strip of paper, wrap it around your head or use a tape measure or a loose tape like a, a tailor's tape and have, have somebody measure the circumference of your head. You know, the, these, these are usually north of $300 for a good one uh, this is not an airsoft helmet by any measure. This will not be used for airsoft. Um, this is just part of one of my kits, and um, you know, it's if you're going to get into something, you know, look at quality, but be conscious of price. Um, you know, these things can go anywhere from three to four hundred dollars to over a thousand dollars, depending on on what you're going to get into. Uh, they do come standard with the arc rail system on them. There's also Velcro. Uh, that's um, I would say that it's a very strong adhesive holds it onto this so you can mount various things, comms, hats, uh, I've seen patches on the back, on the sides, um, you know the arc rail system is very uh, handy, I've got my ear pro on this, so I've actually got to replace these um, adapters here, because um, they're actually not the right ones for the MSA ear pro, uh, but I kind of fabricated them so that they would fit, but they're not giving me the um, retention that I want on the ear pro and it also has the uh, NVG shroud on the on the front as well that you can mount and this will be compatible with any mil spec night vision mount uh, that you'll find out there and that market's not very big so um, there's not a lot of variety out there so that should be pretty easy to find so wanted to start off going through some of these standards and telling you a little bit about the the helmet itself um, I've been very impressed with it um, I do prefer this high cut versus the, the full on. It lets you hear and get a little bit of airflow going in there, so it does help out a lot. Um, so again, uh, very uh, excited to test these, and uh, we're going to be out on the range here in a few minutes, and we will go ahead and head out there.
Hey there, this is Matt with Defense Innovations and today we're out at the range and we're going to do a little bit of testing on the Trenton Tactical Fast Helmet uh, that's going to be new to their product line here in fall 2016. Um, just for reference, uh, this helmet is certified NIJ level 3A. So today we're going to be shooting a few different things at it. We're going to be shooting a 22 long rifle pistol. We're going to do a 9mm uh, test, probably both with a Glock 17 and a Glock 19. Um, with at least uh, a couple different bullets, uh, 115 grain full metal jackets, uh, 124 grain hollow points, and uh, 147 grain hollow points. We're also going to shoot it with a 45 caliber Glock as well, Glock 21. We're going to be shooting that with uh, 230 grain uh, FMJs, and we're also going to be shooting it with some hollow points. Um, and then we're going to switch to the 12 gauge shotgun, and we're going to be running uh, just a standard double lot buck load and then we're going to go to an AR-15 uh, with 62 grain green tips. So just give us a minute and we'll go ahead and get started. Our first test here on the helmet is going to be with a 22 long rifle semi-automatic pistol shooting CCI Stingers. Um, they are 32 grain copper plated hollow points uh, moving at an approximate velocity of 1640 feet a second. And just for the reference here, that hit went in there. No penetration. Can see some flex in the helmet, but no real damage. Okay, our second test here is going to be shot out of a Glock 17 suppressed. And we are going to be shooting 147 grain uh, spear hollow points. So this one did a little bit more damage. Uh, there's definitely some deformation in the helmet itself. You can kind of feel that. Um, we'll go ahead and take the helmet off and see if there's any kind of penetration. Uh, no penetration on the uh, helmet here. There is, however, there is some, again, some deformation here inside the helmet itself. It looks like the padding mainly caught that. But again, uh, no penetration whatsoever with the Spear 147 grain hollow point. Okay, for our second 9mm test, uh, we are going to shoot the other side of the helmet with um, just a standard 115 FMJ, uh, standard 9mm, out of a Glock 17 suppressed. Okay, definitely a smaller entrance wound. That same kind of uh, deformation here in the top of the helmet. Let's see what we have on the inside here. Um, again, no penetration on that 9mm FMJ, which is actually, out of all the bullets we're shooting today, with the exception of the uh, 5.56, which I know is, is will not be stopped by this. That will defeat this helmet for sure. Uh, the 115 FMJ was what I was worried about most because you're going to see that be the highest velocity and it's not going to expand, it's just going to want to zip right through. So, again, no penetration on the helmet. There is some deformation on the inside, but the padding is, is still, it hasn't come through the padding yet. So, I think you're probably going to have a headache, but it's not going to, uh, it's not going to kill you. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move up in calibers to 45 ACP. This is going to be shot out of a Glock 21 using just a standard 230 grain uh, full metal jacket. Okay, so we've got a little bit more of a defined hole with this bullet. You can actually see it the entrance right there. Again, no penetration on the back of the, the head here of the dummy. 
Same story in the back though with the padding. Um, it's definitely going to hit hard, uh, but zero penetration. Zero penetration, but you can definitely see how that material is is poofing out just a little bit. Uh, but overall, you're still you're still alive wearing this helmet. Okay, this will be our uh, nine millimeter carbine slash uh, submachine gun test. It's going to be shot out of a CZ Scorpion with the uh, Gemtech uh, Multi Mount Nine using 147 grain full metal jackets. I think we're about to bust this arc rail right off. Keep hitting it there. Yeah, don't pay attention to these. These were all during a test phase here. But again, no penetration um, above or under the uh, above the arc rail. As we can see here, this is where the the nine mil round, the uh, 147 grain hollow point went in, like a pinhole. And again, no penetration um, in there. Um, there is a little bit of a hole here, but that's actually from where the uh, strap has ripped out, ripped the screw out. So I'm trying to think of how many times we've shot this. That's a lot of kinetic energy going in there. So the helmet itself is staying together, but the strap pulled out the back. As you can see right there is where it would, would mount into. So it is pulled out after a couple of these nine mil shots but no penetration from a projectile. We're gonna do a uh, 12 gauge uh, double lot buckshot here on the left side of the helmet that's uh, relatively unmarred. Um, I don't expect the helmet to protect everything. Obviously, if the spread of the buckshot, there may be some that goes down into the plastic, but I really wanna see the penetration, if there's any at all. I don't think there will be, um, but here we go. This is being shot out of a Mossberg 930 uh, JM Pro Series. All right, so actually looking at it, there aren't uh, all those pellets stayed up in the helmet here. So this arc rail is definitely toast on the left side of the helmet. Um, definitely some shot actually get this helmet off of here he's got one hell of a concussion but no penetration these are all from other tests um, again but no penetration but just a hell of a dent in his head as you can see here there was some serious deformation in the helmet again this is 12 gauge double lot buck at a range of I don't know, maybe 15 feet. So you're pretty close, you know, wearing this helmet. So this is this helmet's taking quite a bit of abuse here. But there's actually looks like still a little bit warm. There's some of the shot right there. I mean, it is it was stuck right on top of the helmet. So not a bad little takeaway there. You can definitely hear that those pellets are trapped in there. So again, no penetration with 12 gauge double lot buck. At this point in the video, we step back from the firing line to use our AR-15 to test the resistance of 556 62 grain green tips. Okay, so I was actually aiming right in the middle of the uh, NVG shroud here. Uh, from a distance of about oh, maybe 70 feet from the target, um, I know, I knew, I should say, before I shot this helmet that it was definitely going to defeat this Kevlar. This level 3A is is just not rated for a rifle round, especially like a 5.56. Uh, these 62 grains, I think, are running between 2,800 and 3,000 feet per second. So you can see the entrance right here. And what's even scarier here is it even pulled the Kevlar out the back. But there's none of these helmets that I know of on the market right now that are going to stop that rifle threat. So let's take a look and see what we got in here. So right in through the forehead. 
and right out the back. Okay, well now we're uh, back from the range and uh, we've gone through, reviewed the video and I've gone through and actually marked on the helmet descriptions of what we're looking at. Um, and I just really wanted to try to give you all a closer look at the, the damage um, that this helmet sustained um, without failing. Um, to what I believe was kind of beyond what the what the spec called for um, but nonetheless did really well and it might be kind of hard to see here in the video but these are actually hollow point expanded rounds stuck below the skin line here um, so still very impressed so I kind of want to get in here and we'll kind of start at the front and um, you know here was the first nine millimeter hit the uh, second nine millimeter hit was right there. You can barely even tell, but it's there's a hole there. Um, as the video started off, we start off with the CCI hollow point, the 22 LR, just barely a little bit in there. Uh, this whole side here, the uh, left side of the helmet, was really really jacked up with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, 12 gauge. Actually, look at that. Pulling that back right now. I don't know if you'll be able to see down in there or not, but there is all sorts of buckshot trapped in there. And you can definitely hear it rattling around in there, but no penetration. Um, the arc rail kind of came apart, um, but if you look here, um, there's some 147 grains uh, from the CZ Scorpion that we shot at right there, no penetration. Um, nine millimeter, 147 grain hollow points right in there, no penetration. Uh, this hole right here is actually from the screw that goes through the helmet for the arc rail um, and attaches inside to the strapping. I think once we hit that really hard a couple times, the arc rail just kind of really torqued it out of there, but uh, no penetration there as well. Um, looking on the back here, you're going to see the 45 ACP, 185 grain hollow point right in there. That was the Hornady critical defense. Back in there, that's the 230 grain, 45 ACP. Just a very small hole. Um, no penetration as well. And really, the only thing, obviously, that got penetration was that 62 grain green tip that came right in here, pierced right through the aluminum, which it should, obviously blew through and pulled right out the back and that is it's pretty it's pretty gnarly uh, taking a look inside the helmet here um, you know it's still pretty much intact um, you know this side here that took the 12 gauge blast that is looking pretty rough um, you know I mentioned in the video that you're gonna have a, a hell of a headache um, but you're gonna be alive not so sure that that would be an accurate statement. Um, I'm not so sure with that much pressure pushing in on the side of the helmet that that wouldn't do some serious head trauma. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a medical physician or a ballistician, like I said earlier in the video, or a scientist. Um, but that 12 gauge put a lot of pressure on this helmet. Again, no penetration, but there was quite a bit of... Um, deformation pushing in from that side of the helmet so um, I'm actually just gonna try this is the same size helmet that I'm I wear yeah I can't even get that anywhere close to be it on my head so again no penetration and you may survive that um, I, I'm just not sure but um, you know that that's definitely gonna leave a mark um, overall I've just been incredibly incredibly impressed with this product uh, offered by Trenton Tactical outside of Cincinnati Ohio and um, really looking forward to moving on and doing our next set of videos looking at uh, chest armor thank you for tuning in today um, I just want to let you know that this is the beginning kind of our trailer for a whole series of videos to come uh, here fall of 2016 where we're going to be torture testing multiple different kinds of body armor. The next section is going to focus mainly on chest plates and plate carriers. So 
We look forward to that and stay tuned. Please subscribe and have a great day.